Welcome back to this class where we were talking about the production of ammonia in an industrial scale taking the help of some catalyst which is iron based catalyst. So this particular catalyst which is the iron catalyst which can be obtained from iron powder also. So if we can have some very good quality of iron powder and that iron powder can be obtained from the high purity magnetite. Magnetite we all know that this is the typical ore of iron where hematite is one of the ore which is Fe2O3 and magnetite is also Fe3O4. So these are spinel type of oxides. So these spinel type of oxid, oxides of iron can be useful for the production of iron powder. So what we get the reduction of this particular magnetite will give you the iron powder and very fine particles of those iron metal that means the pulverized iron metal if we can have a very not very good quality of iron metal in our hand initially we can bond it we can bond it to give you the magnetite of a definite particle size because all these particle sizes are important because the usual particle size depending upon these particle sizes we can have the typical surface area that means the amount of area which can be covered by a mono layer of all those particles all those catalyst particles. So a required amount or required size of these particles will be useful for making this particular catalyst. So what we do now we can have our a right size of magnetite particles in your hand because in laboratory scale we can also synthesize all these useful magnetite particles nowadays. In the era of your nanoparticle productions in the regime of your nanoparticle productions from the simple iron salts that means iron as ferric chloride or iron as some other salt like ferrous sulphate or the iron alarm. We can use the typical iron for making our desired sizes or desired quality of nanoparticles in our hand. So if we can have these magnetites as some good particles or the nanoparticles sometimes of definite size which will be then reduced. So the reduction of Fe2, Fe3O4 will give us the Fe. But what we can have the resulting catalyst particle consists of a core of magnetite because on the surface if we can have the reduction so that encases is a cell of oustite. So oustite is FeO that means we can have a partial reduction because Fe3O4 is a, uh, a corresponding magnetite can have both ferrous state as well as the ferric state in our hand. But if we can go for the typical reduction of this ferric state to the ferrous state as well as the ferrous state already present in it, we can have a oustite uh, layer of that which can be considered as a cell of that which is surrounded by outer cell of catalytically active alpha iron. So the outer cell which is there so, uh, the, so code is magnetite then we have a one particular cell which is of FeO cell and finally we can have the alpha Fe. So is basically a three layer catalyst system and which is also very much useful because whatever surface generated alpha iron we generate that will be useful for our conversion of your ammonia production. So in this way we basically prepare this particular catalyst. So production of this particular catalyst is also an integral part for the production of ammonia industrially. Then we can just see that once we produce this ammonia that the formed ammonia which can either be liquefied because it is a gas how we can transfer from one side to the other because sometimes I know ammonia can be utilized as a direct fertilizer to the soil also. So if we can take it in the gas it will be liquefied first like that of your LPG cylinder or it can be dissolved in water to form a saturated solution of ammonium hydroxide because the concentrated ammonia solutions or we call it as a liquor ammonia. 
so that liquor ammonia can be very useful material consumed by all different types of industry which are dependent on the nitrogen. So, is basically a very useful or a very basic nitrogen based compound which can be utilized for, for all other purposes. So, when we dissolve it we should get a very saturated solution very much saturated solution and that saturated solution having a specific gravity because it is not so easy to achieve a specific gravity high enough like that of your point 88. So, special conditions are required such that we cannot have the diluted version of it. So, a highest level of specific gravity of 0 0.880 can be achieved for the production of your ammonium hydroxide. Now, we just see that how we can utilize this ammonia. So, from nitrogen we, we are having in our hand N2 to NH3. Now, how we can use directly from your nitrogen or from ammonia the NH3 another value added molecule which is very much useful for industrial point of view is our hydrogen. Because from academic point of view also the molecule hydrogen is also very much industry, but from industrial point of view how we can make this particular hydrogen which is a very simple molecule where we can have a nitrogen nitrogen single bond. What earlier we know that the dinitrogen molecule the dinitrogen is the nitrogen gas where we can have 3 nitrogen nitrogen bonds. So, nitrogen nitrogen triple bond making that particular nitrogen molecule is very much inert which is not at all a very reactive species. So, that is why we can use for different types of reactions in the laboratory reactions the nitrogen as the corresponding reaction blanket the inert atmosphere what we can maintain through nitrogen. So, once we break all the 3 bonds between these 2 nitrogens and we add on each nitrogen 3 hydrogen atoms we get the ammonia molecule NH3. And before that that means, if we can go for a stepwise reduction that means, addition of 2 nitrogen each on the nitrogen molecule N2 molecule because we have seen earlier that is a typical 6 electron reduction process where 6 hydrogen atoms or hydrogen ions along with the 6 electrons are attached to the N2 molecule. So, if we just basically lose the triple bond between these 2 nitrogen we will be ending up with a double bonded nitrogen having basically one hydrogen on the each side of this thing. In the next step another 2 electron reduction will give you a nitrogen nitrogen single bonded species with 2 more hydrogens attached to each nitrogen. That means, 2 plus 2 4 hydrogens we are attaching on the dinitrogen molecule giving us this particular molecule which is known as hydrogen. So, hydrogen is your N 2 H 4 and if we see that earlier we have a triple bonded system that means, nitrogen nitrogen triple bonded system between 2 nitrogen. Now, we have the nitrogen nitrogen single bond. So, it is only 145 picometer the nitrogen nitrogen distance and the nitrogen hydrogen distance which is little bit higher than that of your carbon hydrogen distance of 96 picometer which is 102 picometer. So, what about the corresponding physical characteristics of the hydrogen molecule? The hydrogen is basically a colorless liquid which having a boiling point of 386 K and which is miscible with water. So, if your hydrogen uh, hydrogen molecule is not very much stable towards some thermal shock towards the corresponding uh, sunlight and all these things it can break. And sometimes it can so happen that it can go for some explosive reactions. So, it is always very easy or always to get a very safe solution like that of your dissolution of just now we have seen the dissolution of ammonia to water giving you a saturated solution of ammonium hydroxide. So, similarly if you have the hydrogen in your hand, so that hydrogen you can dissolve it or you can pass it into the water molecule and if that is also crystallizable or it can have some other thing which can be considered as a adduct of water molecule. That means, 
N2H4.H2O, we can call it as a hydrogen hydrate, which is commercially available to us and for laboratory use or laboratory sake of other reactions or laboratory purpose we use basically instead of this colorless pure liquid of hydrogen where the concentration is higher, we can use a little bit diluted one which is your hydrogen hydrate and which is also soluble in different organic solvents. So, if we can use that which is soluble in water giving you a water hydrate which can also be soluble in your different organic solvents like acetonitrile or dichloromethane or chloroform. So, that organic solvent can be utilized as a solution for transferring your hydrogen to some reaction. Then we see most important thing for that is that if we can have some alkyl derivative, how we get that alkyl derivative is a very important question to be asked that once we can attach three hydrogen atoms to the nitrogen center or the nitrogen atom, we get an H 3 which is nothing but your ammonia molecule. But if one of that hydrogen can be replaced by the alkyl group which is typically an organic molecule like methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl etcetera. So, what we get that instead of your nitrogen hydrogen bond we can have one of them as the nitrogen carbon bond and that basically give us the corresponding alkyl derivative of ammonia which can be considered as the alkyl amine. So, if one of the H is replaced by your methyl group we get as the methyl amine which is CH3NH2. Similarly, if one of that is replaced by ethyl we get ethyl amine ETNH2. So, these are organic liquids unlike your ammonia which is dissolved in water giving you ammonium hydroxide. So, that corresponding alkyl amines are useful for some other reactions. Similarly, the hydrogen if that particular hydrogen which are which is having 4 nitrogen hydrogen bonds which is N2H4. So, in place of 1 NH bond if we go for one alkyl bond, one N ethyl bond or N methyl bond, we get the corresponding ethyl hydrogen or methyl hydrogen. So, these alkyl derivatives of hydrogen which are very useful because which can be burned very quickly or very easily in a, a very small time of uh, fueling which can be used as rocket fuels when combined with nitrogen dioxide or the dimeric form of nitrogen dioxide NO2 which is nothing but your N2O4 which is also a oxidizing agent. So, in presence of some nitrogen based oxidizing agent the alkyl derivative of hydrogen because it can be controlled for its burning process because when we can have the controlled burning process that particular material can be utilized as fuel. Otherwise, if it is uncontrolled we call it as combustion. Hydrogen burning compared to that alkyl hydrogen burning is therefore, a typical combustion reaction immediately decomposes producing your corresponding water molecule based on the hydrogen and the nitrogen oxides from the nitrogen part. And also this particular hydrogen molecule is useful for agricultural and plastic industries and sometimes it is also used in the removal of oxygen from industrial water boilers to minimize the corrosion is O2. So, this oxygen is O2, uh, this is not O dashed is O2 from industrial water boilers. So, water boilers should have less amount of dissolved oxygen because that dissolved oxygen can be useful at a very high temperature for attacking the material of those boilers. If the material of that boiler is coming from your steel material or any other metallic sheets like iron sheets. So, that iron at high temperature can be corroded for making your iron oxides. So, all the time we should have some idea that we should minimize that particular oxygen for the industrial water boiler. So, hydrogen can be useful for that particular purpose because that hydrogen can take up that O2 to destroy it from the dissolved condition in the industrial water boilers. So, making hydrogen industrially is a typical task therefore, how we can think of that 
how we can make hydrogen. So, one such is a typical Rastic reaction. So, it is well known and a very famous and a pretty old one for during the last about 100 years we are using this particular one, but still it is very much useful for making hydrogen to us. So, this rustic reaction is basically nothing but the basis of the industrial synthesis of hydrogen, where we can go for a partial oxidation of ammonia. So, partial oxidation means how we can go for a oxidation and that oxidation is not a simple attachment of OH to your NH3 that we will also see that what other type of thing we can achieve through that because the replacement of one NH bond of ammonia by NCl bond now, because other sort of oxidation can also be achieved where replacement of one of the NH bond can by an OH bond that will also a other type of molecule that we will also see. So, if we use sodium hypochlorite for the preparation of hydrogen, so in the first step, this is the first uh, process also. So, in the first step, the first very first reaction is for the formation of uh, chloramine. It is nothing but NH2Cl is your chloramine formation. Ammonia which having less one less NH bond and instead of that you can have one NCl bond and one molecule of NaOH. So, what we can do the, in the second step basically the product of these two that means the NH2Cl and NaOH is further reacts with other molecule of NH3. So, what is basically happening there that you can have NH2Cl. So, NCl bond is there available. So, that NCl bond is basically attacking your other NH3 molecule forming a basically NN bond. So, the NN bond formation, so we are basically moving from a reverse direction from a reverse side basically, a different uh, uh, pathway is following instead of thinking in terms of your reduction of 3 bonds between 2 nitrogen in a stepwise manner, we cleave it for ammonia production because we are having ammonia in a plenty amount in our hand. So, from that ammonia basically again we are trying to build the thing that means we are trying to attach two ammonia molecule giving you one nitrogen nitrogen single bond. So, this basically gives us that N 2 H 4 that means the hydrogen molecule itself and that hydrogen molecule along with NaCl and water is the slow step basically. The second step is therefore, a slow step for the production of your hydrogen. So, when we basically use ammonia, so ammonia is your starting material or the corresponding bulk material which can be utilized for the production of hydrogen. We use the sodium hypochlorite, so the step wise we will see that we can have this. So, in the first step it is the sodium hypochlorite preparation that means sodium hydroxide when chlorine is passed through a saturated solution of or a highly concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide we produce sodium hypochlorite and then the two other steps what we have just now discussed. So, overall what we are getting basically if we start only with ammonia and we allow the reaction with the chlorine oxidation. So, that is also another procedure for making hydrogen not that you have to buy sodium hypochlorite because sodium hypochlorite is also available in the market. But instead of using sodium hypochlorite, we can use directly the alkaline solution of chlorine gas. So, chlorine can also be passed over that particular ammonia in presence of a strongly alkaline solution or alkaline medium with respect to sodium hydroxide, not potassium hydroxide or any other hydroxide, because this particular removal of sodium chloride is easier for this particular step, giving you into H4. 2 molecules of NaCl and 2 molecules of water. So, that basically gives us a particular process where we utilize this particular production of hydrogen. Then another process, the second process when we do not have the source of the starting material for hydrogen preparation that ammonia. 
So instead of ammonia, sometimes urea can also be available because we all know that from ammonia we make urea, but people also have tried that whether we can have some amount of urea or urea is also in a plenty amount. So urea can also be taken into account because this urea molecule as we all know that urea has NH2CO NH2. So in between two NH2 groups which are being utilized for making that NH2 NH2 bond that means NN bond for giving you this particular hydrogen molecule in between you have the CO function. So that CO function can be removed from there as a carbonate. So this CO of this urea can be removed as carbonate when we react it with again hypochlorite solution. So sodium hypochlorite solution again in a strongly alkaline medium can be utilized for the production of your hydrogen in a different route. And definitely why we are trying this urea process compared to the previous one where we are ammonia we are utilizing. The advantage of this process is that the avoidance of a large excess of ammonia because handling of the ammonia and utilization of this ammonia and use this ammonia is sometimes is very difficult and the reaction goes at atmospheric pressure. There is no need to go for a higher pressure for this particular reaction. So, the cost effectiveness in terms of maintaining the pressure of the industrial scale is important. So, we just go for one step to the other that means we can use ammonia and the second procedure we can use urea for the production of your hydrogen. Then we see another interesting process we are just basically talking about three processes for the production of this thing which is Bayer process. Bayer we know that the Bayer AG the German major the German industry which they, they can have some their own idea. So, sometimes what we can have initially when they produce it they produce basically through their patented knowledge or patented procedure. So, neither they are going through ammonia path or they are going not they are going through the corresponding urea path. They are going in some different way but utilization of ammonia again but through some other modification. So, in this particular case oxidation of ammonia with sodium hypochlorite is achieved in presence of a ketone which are those ketones we can use acetone or we can use the methyl ethyl ketone. So, what are the function of this particular ketone basically because the reaction what do we know already that sodium hypochlorite when react with ammonia giving you the hydrogen. So, in situ when hydrogen is formed that hydrogen is being trapped by two molecules of acetone from the two ends basically. As we all know that if we have free NH2 function and if the ketone is available so that NH2 and the ketone or the aldehyde can react and that reaction basically give us the formation of the C bases or the imine formation or the imine bond formation which is achieved through the formation of C double bond N. So, the hydrogen can have two double ended NH2 on the right hand side and NH2 on the left hand side. So, if two acetone molecules approach this hydrogen from the two ends one from the left and another from the left we get basically two imine bond formation. So, basically is a diimide formation that means diimine formation rather diimine formation on the hydrogen backbone. So, basically that is being achieved for this particular reaction. So, acetone on the left and acetone on the right on the produced hydrogen which is bonded by N N. So, this is basically the corresponding agene we call because basically a C double bond N on the left and basically another C double bond on the right instead of talking in terms of is the agene is a diagene. So, diagene of acetone is formed along with NaCl and water molecule. So, the second step is the hydrolysis step. In that particular step we go for the hydrolysis of the acetone agene or the acetone diagene giving hydrogen and acetone back. So, it is basically a typical purification process and the formed hydrogen is being trapped by the acetone 
and we can purify it from the contamination of NaCl or any other thing or any other starting material because this is the intermediate that means the diagene is the intermediate which is being hydrolyzed for the formation of hydrogen N2H4 and the acetone back. So, this is therefore the particular process and lastly we will see that whether we can utilize this particular uh, oxidation process that means the hypochlorite basically the business of the hypochlorite or direct use of chlorine whether we can utilize hydrogen peroxide. So far we are talking so much about this hydrogen peroxide business. So, whether we can directly use hydrogen peroxide for oxidizing agent and use of ethyl methyl ketone. In the Byers process what we have seen that we can use acetone as well as the ethyl methyl ketone between because it has a different type of stability because it is asymmetric is not symmetrical or unsymmetric ketone. So, the same thing is formed, but instead of forming sodium chloride because hypochlorite was there in a OCL was there and OCL minus is your oxidizing part which is oxidizing your NH3 to hydrogen formation here hydrogen peroxide is giving you water molecule and showing this corresponding oxidation reaction for the formation of your diagene of ethyl methyl ketone. Then we can have this particular diagene and like our previous case or the previous process we go for the hydrolysis of the methyl ethyl ketone diagene yielding hydrogen and the corresponding ketone back. Then we just can see and we can continue to our next class that whatever we are talking in terms of the corresponding formation of our chloramine and hydroxylamine. So, chloramine is nothing but we have seen just now in our previous class that we can have the ammonia which is a pyramidal molecule the nitrogen hydrogen nitrogen hydrogen as well as the corresponding nitrogen chlorine thing. When we have when we have the ammonia molecule all three are same type of bond that means H N H bond which is 107 degree, but when one is substituted by C L you can have a different bond angle you see that C L N H bond is little bit shorter which is 103 degree. And this particular chloramine formation which is also very much useful for making other thing that means one very important molecule for that is that. 1 1 dimethyl hydrogen preparation. So, 1 1 dimethyl hydrogen preparation is also very much useful. How we can get it? Because we have seen already that I told you earlier also that if you have one of the NH bond is replaced by methyl function, we get is methylamine. When the second one is replaced, we get dimethylamine. When third one is replaced, is get trimethylamine. So, at the step where we substitute two of the NH bonds by methyl group we will get the dimethylamine. So, dimethylamine that means the one part of this in place of use your ammonia we have this dimethylamine. So, one part will be converted to your dimethyl part and if we take or if we use the other part as your NH2 function we get the corresponding one as 1 1 dimethyl hydrogen molecule which can have some corresponding control burning process that means, which is not a typical combustion or a burning process, but which can give you energy for fuel purpose for propelling your rocket. How we can make that particular hydrogen out of this? So, for that basically we can have to use the corresponding chloramine and that particular chloramine is unstable and violently explosive. So, this cannot be your fuel also. So, chloramine is highly explosive when it is highly explosive we have to handle it in a very regular manner and very controlled manner and we should pay respect to this particular chemical because it is highly explosive. And therefore, it is usually handled in a very dilute solution because when things are very much concentrated the corresponding risk for explosion is bigger and bigger or higher and higher that it explodes very fast when the concentration is very high and is uh, reaching some uh, concentration which is uh, corresponding concentration basically controlled explosion. So, dilute solutions where we can dilute it we can dilute it by use of water as we have seen the in case of hydrogen also for making hydrogen hydrate and 
by diluting it with ether. So next day what we can see that the making of this chloramine and its use basically as well as your uh, corresponding uh, hydroxyl amine formation because one of the roots for hydroxyl amine which is nothing but instead of NH2Cl we can have NH2OH and that we will see in our next class in detail that we can handle it as a salt or as aqua solution through some process where we can oxidize the thing from nitric oxide. So, we can have some nitrogen oxides now. So, these nitrogen oxides are also very much useful and in some other indirect pathway like that of our making your chloramine. So, this particular one that we can use it directly for the making of this particular chloramine and this chloramine can be directly used for the production of some other useful molecules and then we will see that how we can change this NCl bond to NOH to giving us hydroxyl amine because those hydroxyl amine molecules are also very much important and also interesting. Thank you very much.